Hey, yo there. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any videos. Anyways, I hope you enjoy the video. Hey, yo guys, Pandy351 here, and I'm back with more Power Wash Simulator. I've got Cat with me, as always. Yo. You hear Cat inside here? doing things. Oh. Um, yeah. So, basically, from the last time we were here, if you do not remember, everything is going horribly fucking wrong. And we don't okay. know why, but we're gonna figure it out, <laughs> I guess. It's all good. Alright. So, the next story. Well, what have we got for the next book? Because you were you were chuckling about that maniacally. <laughs> oh, Hellboy. So, well, I'm just getting a few of the names. Last night, yes. Okay, so today's, well, this recording's book is Friendly Face. Oh no. I have heard oh, one yes. thing about this story. Mm hmm. Ew. Oh yeah. Continue on. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, Friendly Face follows Jack, Eaton, and their cat, Faraday. But Faraday doesn't come in yet. It's Edward, not Eaton. My apologies. So Jack, no, not Jack. Edward, he's a little bit of a klutz. He, he's got big brain, but no thoughts. He's too busy thinking on stuff. He's like, he thinks of stuff, but he doesn't think about... The consequences, consequences. of his actions. Yes. Yeah. His brain, it's too fast. It, it go burr. Uh, and his friend Jack is also a bit of a close. They're, they're, they're the weirdos together. They enjoy the science. They like hanging out. They're just vibing together, as you do in high school. They're 8th grade? I don't know what that means. I would just, it, it picked it up when I was reading for Year the Year 8. Year 8. That's what it means. It's like... 12.30? I think? No. Yeah. It's high school. Or middle yeah. school. Technically, depending. <laughs> uh, like, like, I don't know what, what 8th grade means. It's the same number. We just call them grade and you call them year. No, because then, because like, you have... Maybe? I don't know. We have 12 grades. You have 12 years. No, we have years 1 till 11, and then you go into 6th form. Okay, that's, that's, that's 12th grade. That's 2 years, though. So it's 13. Technically, you have... Well, because we have... Uh, we have kindergarten, so... Yeah, but we have a uh, reception. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not joking. Because we, there's, okay, because there's preschool, kindergarten, and then first through 12. <laughs> you know, we have, you have nurseries, then you have reception. Well, nurse, yeah, years. nurseries are not the same as preschool. Yeah. Um, Nursery reception, then you have years one till three, uh, which is primary school. Elementary. Then there's. Wait, is it not? No, it's years one and two. Sorry, my bad. Then Although, technically, three. elementary is one through six for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So primary is years one through two. Then there's years three till six. That's junior school. And then there's years 7 till 11, that's high school. And then you have 6th form, which is technically years 12 and 13. Fucking 
weird ass motherfuckers. I can see the same like you. <laughs> and yet the books are in our ears, so suck it, nerd. Oh no, it's almost like an American wrote them. What a coincidence. <laughs> Exactly. We have the Chuck E. Cheese. You say it like that, it's like you're winning. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, friendly face. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't being so friendly right now. <laughs> what? Nothing, 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 nothing. Don't worry about it, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. It's fine. So much. Yeah, it's okay. So, yeah. Uh, one day after school, getting off the bus, and they hear this noise, it's like a It's not that bad, it's just the first noise they decided to do. Anyway. And it's described as the chipmunk cheating. And they're like, what? And they, they look around, and they find a kitten! It's like, oh. you're chilling in a box, you sad, you cry. And Jack is like, ah, cat! I shall name them Faraday, and they will be mine. And like, everyone's like, okay, cool. See. They have Faraday. And it's going good. They have him for like a few months. They like sort of train him. Uh, like, I can't they make like a little obstacle course for him. Uh, he's in Aww. the back garden. They just have a good old time. You know? Don't you know how good old times are in Fazbear Frights stories? No! Don't hurt the cat! <laughs> We're gonna hurt the cat and no. more! So one beautiful sunny day, they're all in the garden, they're having a good old time, and then Faraday goes off and chases a butterfly. <laughs> How adorable! No. Jack's like, oh no, Faraday, come back! No. Don't chase that butterfly! Oh, the pain I suddenly feel in my soul! See so yeah, no. Faraday, he goes and he chases that butterfly. And Jack chases Faraday. And they both get hit by a truck. The bo Oh, God. In front of Edward. Oh, no. So this story is off to a great start so far. We're only in the first 20 pages. Jesus. That's a rough estimate. I don't know page numbers. But you get the gist. Oh god, that's awful. Mm. Oh shit! Oh, uh, what did you do? I fell out of the skybox. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Where are you? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> PC, where are you? <laughs> PC, what did you do? PC, what did you do? <laughs> This is gonna take me a minute because my computer is so slow. <laughs> what did you do? PC, what did you do? My gun is gone! <laughs> I'm floating as fast as I can. <laughs> okay, my I'm God. loading. I'm gonna I click watch stream. <laughs> my gun is gone! <laughs> What the fuck did you do? PC, what the fuck? <laughs> My god, just what happened? It out of existence. How, what did you do? Oh god, oh uh, well. <laughs> PC, PC what have the, to fuck? Have the video. <laughs> what? Oh, you're gonna have to watch the video back. Jesus oh boy. Good. Jeez, this guy! I can't okay. even see where you are. Yeah, that's because I got thrown outside of the box. I, like I'm you out of the box. You got thrown? I <laughs> what did you do? Where's the scaffolding? It's with me. Why did you take it with you? What did you do? Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, okay. All right. She's <laughs> fucking crazy. <laughs> 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 okay, no, you didn't understand. Okay, so I was like trying to move the scaffolding, and apparently I got like I jumped up and I grabbed it, and it shot me into oblivion. 
<laughs> so I was stuck holding the scaffolding. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. Oh, fuck. You don't understand. Oh, God. That was awful. Oh. <laughs> I had my gun and it was shaking and then it vibrated out of existence. I shit you not. <laughs> Holy fuck. Oh, God. No, hang on. You know what? I'm going to pause. I'm going to stop the recording real quick just so I can show you what the fuck just happened. Because <laughs> that was too fucking good. Hold up. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not waiting. That's being left in. I hope you know that. Okay, there's no, all I was about to come in, he like opened the door, peeked in, and like left immediately. Yeah, um, as you can tell, I have to talk in a softer voice now because if I talk at full volume, my uh, my voice is completely destroyed. Yeah, so now I just sound like a puppet, and this is what you guys are gonna have to deal with. PC got too silly. I, I, that fucking god, <laughs> that killed me. Oh, I that was so tell. fucking funny. Oh my god. <laughs> but now I just sound like a fucking puppet. Yeah. Is this one of my worst voices? No. Hmm. Where the fuck are you uh, washing? I might end up not speaking because this entire child is running around. Are you fucking kidding me? He's not I can't here yet. talk. But, well, I don't I know what to can't. tell you, PC, unless you want small child noises in your video. <laughs> SMH, where are you at? I'm at the back. Um. Shall I continue with friendly things? Yes, please do. So, yeah, as we left off, Jack and Faraday get hit by a truck. Uh, <laughs> obviously, Edward is pretty upset about this. For obvious reasons. Um, he kind of doesn't leave his room for a good few weeks. Uh, he's like, hey, I don't like your friend died. You should be like, try and leave your room and just get up and exist, okay? He's like, eh. So she goes to work, and then like he's like, okay, I guess I'm gonna go downstairs and get something to eat. And then there's that like trope of oh, main character goes downstairs and looks at a TV at the right time to see a very specific ad relating to their problem. In this case, it's an ad by from Fazbear Entertainment, where if you send them some DNA, like a hair sample they will create a little animatronic of your deceased pet. That's kind of fucked up. Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> uh, so, Edgar's like, huh, I'm gonna try that out. So, in the dead of night, he goes to the place where it happened, um, and just kind of G grab some hair from the road. Like, the bodies are gone, but they're still existing viscera. I like how you said hair. Specifically. Yeah. Because I know where this thing goes. Because <laughs> it's not fur he grabs, it is hair. <laughs> so anyway. He mails that off to Fazbear to do fuck knows whatever they're doing. <laughs> I don't know how exactly that works. You know, oh, you send your dead animals fur and we will create a robot of them. Like, how does that work? <laughs> that doesn't tell you what they look like. Anyway, so he waits a few weeks and then he comes home one day and he has a package from Fazbear Entertainment. He's like, oh boy, my my clo my robotic clone of Faraday is here, oh boy. Let's have a look. And he opens it and like looks Yep, that sure looks like a cat. Oh wait! 
That cat has a human boy's face. That face is the face of my dead friend. Oh boy, oh no. That's not good. So yes, as PC pointed out, um, in the dark light of the moon, uh, he grabbed both fur and hair, and so he ended up with a mix of both. A cat body with a human face. Obviously, Edward a little freaked out by this. So he decides, okay, I'm gonna go bury it in the garden. You you Which, can tell you can tell that Fazbear Entertainment like puts it in a machine and it just happens because there's no way that that would get past any human person. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> there's no way that got approved by a human person. It, maybe it did. They're just like, oh, this is a, a weird ass kid. Okay, whatever you want, pal. So anyway, in. An improvement from Fetch, he doesn't beat it to death, he just buries it in the garden and never thinks about it again. Uh, Until... And then, like... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's, uh, like, one night, he thinks, like, he hears scratching like, at the back door. And, like, he ignores it, like, uh, that's kind of weird, I'm just gonna ignore that. But then, like... In the days that follow, he feels like he's being watched. And he keeps thinking that he's seeing the cat out of the corner of his eye, watching him and following him, stalking him. He's like, oh, no, no. And then, like, when he goes to look in the back garden where he buried it, and it's not there, no, no, no. He's not there no more, and that's not good. Poor then, kid, he's just like grieving his like... He's had a rough existence Yeah, in the he's just so. grieving his like friend and his cat. Mm -hmm. And then he accidentally makes a clone of the both of them. And it's now following him. I, I gave you a section to work on. Why are you coming into my section? God damn. Anyway, so one day after school, he like, he sees Faraday, the, the Faraday clone, and he's like, oh no, I gotta run. So he does, he like, uh, he runs off from school, like gets off the bus, and he just like, books it. Uh, he starts running down this, um, he like, takes a back way and through the woods. There's nothing that proves that this cat thing actually has any kind of ill intent, too. No, it's, it's just, just watching. Him. It's just watching and following him. So yeah, he's running. Probably he's like running it's programmed to do. Mm -hmm. It's running through the backwoods, trying to get to his house. He's running and... Well, I mean, Edward, he's just so distracted and clumsy. He never, he's always missing out on something. Which is how he misses out on the truck that hits him. Oh my god. Yeah, and the story ends with little Faraday Jack cat sitting by Edward's remains. Like, oh boy, this was a fun game. I can't wait to get up and play again. Oh boy, I love my friend. Damn, that's friendly face. That one's like, that one's a bit fucked up. <laughs> Yeah, not in a good way. <laughs> yeah. Not in a good, like, haha, this is messed up more in like the, oh god, please. Like, oh Jesus Christ. You know you're off to a great start when a child and his cat get hit by a truck in the first thing. And this- I mean, Fuck the child, but the cat getting hit by a truck makes me very <laughs> upset. <laughs> And this lovely punch in the goat is followed up by sea bunnies. Sea bunnies, which is just a whole different type of what the fuck. Okay, let's hear about. I've never, I've not heard this one. I don't think. Surprising. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so our main characters here are Mott. 
M O T T Mott. All right. And his little brother Rory. All right names. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Parents must hate him. I wonder if at a certain point Scott was like, "Oh no, I can't use the same name twice," or people think it's the same character, <laughs> so they have to like Probably. keep changing the name. <laughs> Which Very is a fair, it's a fair assumption of the FNAF community at this point. <laughs> it means they end up with Mott and this little brother Rush. So yeah, they they're just bros. They're hanging out. They're chilling. They enjoy each other's company. They don't hate each other, terrorize each other. Stop! You have a whole section right there. <laughs> this is mine. I have been working at this. You see, Sunday Get out of here. <laughs> Be gone. <laughs> Go away. This is mine. <laughs> Go away! Shoo! Run! Go away! Go away! Go away! This is... This is mine! You don't see me come into your area, no, I do my own bit. It's a thing you I do constantly. When? When I was working on the front, you I was working on the blue pit, and then you did it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got real quiet there, huh? Because <laughs> you know I'm right, bitch. So anyway, rotten more, rotten more. Mhm. Mm <laughs> rotten more. They are good birds. They like each other's company. They don't hate each other or try and stuff each other into giant animatronic mouths. Right. <laughs> uh, the story starts off with them kind of vibing. Chilling at a Freddy Foo bars, because you know that's the only place to go in these stories. You can only go to a Freddy Foo bar nowhere else. Anyway, of course, of course. Mhm, mhm. Uh, the brother Rory, uh, he's been saving up his tickets to get one of the grand prizes at the prize counter, and it's. Okay, let me see. They are sea monkeys that have been genetically engineered to look like Bonnie the Bunny. Why? I'm deadly serious. Why? Why indeed? I. As much as I love these books, I will. I don't know who made the comment, but Fazbear used to be this, like, you know, little pizza place, this little family restaurant, and now it's a company that specializes in creating copies of your dead pets and genetic m manipulation and f science kits that create sentient Fazgu. The story do not give a fuck. <laughs> okay, you know what? That's fair. I'm gonna look that at the scaffolding. That the first story probably has a theme of trying to bring something to life and it going horribly wrong. And it yeah, leading to your before. own death. <laughs> you that's know, never happened before. <laughs> what's that spring trap? Hey, PC. Yeah? Well, are we gonna talk about the giant squid monster that's on the temple or nah? Nah. Nah. Okay. It's probably like Cthulhu or something. K 
Cat-thulu. Is that what you are, Cat-thulu? No, I'm a mech suit. But are My you toes? a cat mech suit of Cat Thulu? Maybe. I don't know. Remember that the whole thing I have my own memories, but not the memories of my creator or yes. original. Yeah, not creator, it's your original. <laughs> Mind your toes. I'm all good. Here, yeah, Rory wins these C1Es. A mop doesn't really like them. He's kind of like, oh, they're weird and creepy and gooey and you. And Rory's just like, well, you're weird. <laughs> anyway, let's go home to Mother and only Mother. If I remember correctly, there's only mother. That's a uh, curse. Uh huh. So, it's the other usual dynamic of um, older brother looking after younger brother. I mean, he does a good job of it. He gets him ready for bed. He helps him with his homework. They've got. They're doing good, you know. Uh, then what? No, Rory sets up his sea bonnies. He puts them in his fish tank. So like, so they can grow or so. Just think about like specific water instructions. I don't know. I haven't had sea bunnies in a real one time. Sea monkeys. Anyway. Cut to the next day and Rory's like, Yo, my sea bunnies, they have grown. They're so heckin' cool. Holy heck. I'm just like, what's your language? That doesn't actually happen. I'm just trying to do it for comedic effect. Anyway. Mott still doesn't like them. He thinks they're weird. He especially thinks they're weird when he starts hearing them talk in his head. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? The sea bunnies talk in his head and they call him a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> they actually... <laughs> I'm only half joking. They call him a coward because he's scared of them. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah. Pony so be yeah, roasting this child. <laughs> so yeah, that happens. Or I just might just think it's really weird and he doesn't like them. Uh, but Mott but Mott doesn't like them, but Roy likes them, so he's like, okay, whatever. Um but then what one day well he's in his brother's room and his brother like leaves the room to go get something. The sea bunnies start surrounding uh, the brother's goldfish. I think his name is like Felix or something. It doesn't matter because the sea bunnies consume him. Oh, what the fuck? The sea bunnies consume the goldfish and then they start replicating the goldfish. You know, like how in Big Hero 6, there's like uh, the, the, the nanobots make up like this big thing. Yeah, the, the fish is now just a fish but made out of um, the sea bunnies. That's kind of fucking weird and gross. It is, and Mott agrees with you, which is why Mott decides one day while his brother is like at school or not home yet, he flushes the sea bunnies down the toilet. That's a mistake. <laughs> oh boy, you know. Yeah, Rory comes home and was like, I'm sorry, uh, I was trying to like clean out the fish tank and they all uh, fell in and got flushed away. I'm so sorry, brother. And uh, Rory's upset, understandable. And Mosh is like, okay, thank God, Christ is fucking averted. And then... It's like, everything's fine. You no. Know? Wakes up one night, he's like, oh, I'm thirsty, I'm gonna go. Get a drink from the kitchen no, tap. Get, uh, that's from not the bathroom good. sink. You that's know, I should do. You just That's bad. Know, it's bad things oh are no, about to happen. It's totally fine. It's just a nice drink of water. It's really, really refreshing water. I mean, like it, there might have been like maybe some it's a foam I mean, I don't know, it's like it's weird lumpy water. That's not right, huh? That's weird. Water is not supposed to be lumpy. 
What is not supposed to whisper in your ear, calling you a coward and telling you you're gonna die? Oh no. So yeah, Mott is now convinced that he's swallowed the sea bunnies. But he tries to convince himself that he's just like making up. So says like, you know, I'm just overreacting. I'm fine. I didn't actually swallow any sea bunnies. But like, he's like, but maybe I did. And he starts like getting stomach cramps. He can hear them in his head. Like he goes to a doctor at some point. They were, they, and he's like, hey, yo, doc. Um, I like. I have something to tell you. I I feel like really go really bad. Like my stomach is killing me. He's like, oh, he who I'm the doctor. Let's have a look. Uh, the doctor's like a family friend, doing. And the doctor's like, well, I don't know. I don't see anything. So like, we'll have a. Doesn't seem like anything's wrong. We'll go take like an X-ray. We do an X-ray. It's like, huh, like, we don't think anything's wrong. But then, like, this, this certain part of you here looks weird. I'm not like has a look. I was like, "Oh my god, it's the sea bunnies." And the doctor's like, "What?" He's like, "Doc, you're not gonna believe me, but my brother got these uh, sea bunnies from uh, Freddy Fabers, and they're evil, and they killed his goldfish, so I flushed them. But then they they've come back, and I accidentally drank them, and now they're trying to kill me, and like disassemble me and turn me into sea bunnies." And the doctor just looks and is like, "I'm gonna call your mum now." And he's like, no. And then later that night, the, the stomach cramp is just getting worse and worse. And he's like, oh god, oh man, I gotta go to the, I gotta go to the doctor again. I'm, I'm, I'm dying here. And it's raining, and he gets on his bike, but he feels his legs and arms. They feel really weird. It's like, it's like he can't really move them right. It feels like, kind of like, fall into pieces. Are you okay? You've been sitting in that corner for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I got a message from Mar. And I'm responding to it. Continue it's on. Bad. Uh-huh. It's, it's not bad, it's a reference. Okay. But my, just, my voice is actually just yeah, like straight up just gone. I know, I wanted to I wanted to check. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, yeah, I know. I can't control tone right now. I know, I know. So yeah, Mott's going to the doctor's he's riding his bike, but then his like arms and legs were weird. And then parts didn't like start dropping off. And the sea bonnet's like, You're gonna die lol, nerd, lol, well, you're a bitch, lol. <laughs> if they could curse they would be, I'm just saying. Damn. <laughs> if there was any characters that would curse in these books, it would be the sea boys. They would be taking all the curse words. So yeah, that's happening. And like, Mott just about makes it to the door. He knocks on the door. Then, camera switch. It's the um, receptionist at the doctor's office. Like, huh, oh, knock on the door. I wonder who that could be. And then she goes out and it's like, oh, hello, Mott. Are you okay? And he's just like standing there in the rain, like weird ass being like, Yeah, I'm fine. Good night. He's like, Okay, good night. She like lets it, and he starts walking away, like, Oh, that was pretty weird. Then it was like, She closes the door, he just kind of like dissolves into a puddle, and then that's it, that's the end. So the sea she- bonnies pretended to be him so they could tell the doctor everything was fine. Yeah. Just to dissolve anyway? Yeah. Well, you know, you don't want to get caught as a sea bonnet, because sea bonnies can't do shit. Like, if you know a sea bonnet is a sea bonnet, you're just gonna die. Mm-hmm. That's fair, I guess. I- I'm just trying to- I'm just a shuman. That's sea bonnies, like... <laughs> Uh, this book in general is good. And it's just, just kind of what the fuck. <laughs> yeah. I do agree with that conclusion. Hmm? I do agree with that conclusion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if I remember correctly, the next book, which might probably won't be today, could be Direct Your Voice, Gun. Yes, the next one is Prankster. Not the story, not 
in this thing, the like next book. Okay, but there's story. a third story though. There is a third story. Gun. Sorry, I got Give like distracted. I'm working. <laughs> so this third one is Together Forever. Ah. Uh, you know, you know good all. things are gonna happen. No. <laughs> good things are gonna no. be happening. No. I kinda like that, don't you know? No, bad things. Okay, okay. okay. So Alright, I'm gonna gonna take me a second to read through and get the names, so we're gonna get them as I read them. So we have Jessica, we have Brittany, and then... Give me a second. <laughs> okay. Uh. Ah. Cindy and Mindy. Okay. This takes place in a high school. So, Brittany and Jessica are our main characters, and they're, I guess, in like high school movies, they're like the typical like queen bees. They're popular. They like do the fashion. I kind of, I kind of trope. Yeah. Mhm. Mm uh, I think one of them got hum coming queen. I don't know. The I don't remember what grade they're in, but they're like, oh, I would say they're like 15, 16 age range. Cindy and Mindy are, they're younger. I think they were like 12, 13. I think there was like, I think it might even be like, they're not technically supposed to be there, but there's like emerging schools or something. Whatever. They're younger. It's Brittany and Jessica think they're stupid. But and like try to bully them but Cindy and Mindy are just like lol power get power of friendship bitch we don't care nice <laughs> they repel bullying with the power of friendship um they have a robotics class uh, that Cindy and Mindy are in it Brittany and Jessica are in it I don't remember why they're in it I think it's just like credit or something I, there's a lot of robotics class is that a thing I, I, I shouldn't be asking questions because it should be wrestling your voice yeah there is Okay. Usually it's Lego related though. Yeah. So yes, that is the thing. Uh, and on that particular day, the teacher is like, hey kiddos, today is something special. Today we have some old animatronics for you to try out, to, to reprogram and Figma digs, to try out different systems and stuff. And it's like, oh boy! And it's like, uh, tell me some robotics things. Send him and you're like, we have answers. Here are answers. It's like, good job. You get a robot dog to play around with. Have fun. Fetch. Uh, it's not fetch. It's just like a small little loggy. It's a good boy. Uh, uh, and then he hands out the antronics and uh, Brittany and Jessica are the last ones to get one. And he <laughs> pulls out this giant ass animatronic pig. <laughs> like, it, catch? it's. Kind of. Her name is Rosie Porkchop. And essentially, she's Pig Patch in a dress. <laughs> nice. Yeah. If, if, it's not like. Yeah. Uh, it's like, here you go, girls. Here's this a suit. You know, it's. It, Funny enough, it's not. Like, it's really old. It's like a spring lock suit or something. Well, anyway, have fun reprogramming. Goodbye. I'm gonna leave you to do this while I go home. You kids can walk up, right? Okay, bye. So there with the suit. Brit Brittany and Jessica are like, well, this kind of sucks. Like, but then one of them has the idea, like, hey, maybe we can program this suit to grab Cindy and Mindy and put them inside it and they can serve us like servants because we're evil jerks and everyone is like that is a brilliant idea let's do it oh no uh huh uh huh these poor other two kids <laughs> so they're gonna get their revenge but you know it's gonna be like that moment of like oh so. I was continuing on <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah, they're working on that. They they're there for a few hours, like programming. Like, if you see Cindy and Mindy, grab. 
uh, they start going on about what like, they can do. Um, or they can serve us tea, and they can they can ha carry our bags, and well, everyone's gonna laugh at them. These like two little brats, just like in a suit. Lol, wouldn't that be funny? It's like yo, lol. Yeah. So they get the code and done. Uh, uh, I have to quickly check something. It's gonna take me a long bit. Come on, come on. Uh. Okay. I got what I needed. So, they finish doing the coding. Oh damn, this is some thick dirt, holy moly. Sorry. So yeah, they do the coding, uh, Jessica turns Rosie Park top on, and she like turns away to go look at something, because she's like, not working. It's like, okay, go, go grab a child, and the, and trying to do anything, she's like, how oh, weird. And she looks back at the code. But then when she turns back, uh, Rosie is grabbing Brittany, instead. It's like, Jessica turns back. And Brittany's being grabbed, like, oh, that's kind of weird. Why are you doing that, lol? And it's like, hey, a a help. This is kind of hurting, actually. Can you get it to stop? He's like, I'm trying, man. And then Rosie, like, opens the chest compartment and starts dragging Brittany inside. He's like, you girl, help. He's like, oh no, that's not good. Uh, so Brittany gets shoved inside of the thing, and he's like, oh, that's not good. And then there's, um, well, the spring lock's gotta do what a spring lock's gotta do. Jump. <laughs> yeah, Brittany's kind of uh, a deaded. But then, this, then Rosie Porkchop Pro Pro starts speaking. And Brittany's voice. And she's like, what? What's going on? It's like, I don't know, man. It's really weird. It's strange, but I think you should like come here. And just cause, like, no, I think I'm gonna like go get help. And Brittany's like, like, no, you know, you're gonna you're gonna come join me now in the zoo. And just cause, like, maybe I don't want to though. But it's too late because Rosie Park up, she's grabbing Jessica. And so basically, she gets what I'm hearing inside. is that like Brittany possesses the thing real quick, like. Oh yeah, real quick. And then is like, yo, when your turn. <laughs> yeah, um, skipping over a very gruesome scene, telling us on how, uh, describing how Brittany is spread out across the insides of the machine. Because fun fact, uh, the spring locks go in, and then they go back out to let Jessica in. Um. It gives us a description of Brittany's face, it, it, just the face, just detached, and on the side of the thing, uh. Uh, before, Jess before Jessica is also spring-locked, um, and s skewed into different pieces and splayed out along the inside of the machine as well. Um, cut forward to the morning, and Cindy and Mindy are here. Like, whoa, cool, pig animatronic. I wonder what this is. And then Rosie Porkchop is like, people, hello, I'm here to serve you and help you. And the Cindy and Mindy are like, whoa, that's so nice. I bet, I bet Brittany and Jessica did this because they felt bad. Okay, Rosie, let's go. This is going to be so cool. And that's the end. Damn. Yeah. Kinda deserved it though. Yeah, it's more so fucked up like 
They almost killed their classmate, though. Yeah. It was more so fucking like, Jesus Christ, that is a graphic description of being murdered by a springlock suit. Which does happen in Pizzaplex. Pizzaplex is also very gruesome. I don't know, they have a lot of different names, but yeah, that's Friendly Face. This green stuff is so... <laughs> so tough. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna wait for the messages to go by, and then I'm gonna screenshot them and send them to you, Cat. Concern noises. Hang on there. Oh, what the hell? Alright, there you go, Cat. Read that. Okay. There are traces of an odd luminous law of Odd luminous ore everywhere. I've never seen anything like it. Hang on, there's something else up here. Wait. Here Where's the volcano? It's in the back. The fuck? It hasn't moved. I sent you something else. Uh, the fuck hasn't shown up yet. Look out, an aircraft is shot straight out of the volcano. It's heading your way. An aircraft came out of the volcano? <laughs> I don't know. I don't you see, see anything? anything? No. I think we're gonna have to get more of the thing done. Yeah. I'm just scared of missing it though. We can like take turns. Like I can do stuff and then you can watch. Or, yeah, well. I'll I'll do this wall over here. How about that? Yeah, because I can see the volcano from here. Yeah. Anyways, quiet quiet washing time. Yeah. Imagine if they didn't add multiplayer and we had to and I had to go through this all on my own. Damn. <laughs> Are there been people who did go through this alone? I know, but I'm just saying. Yeah. Hang off for a second. Okay, never mind. I heard someone like, is that a motor? No, it's just... It's just me. Just me. But I sneeze. <coughs> Zoom tight. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you.
I'm going to have to end the episode soon, but I also really don't want to because I know once we're done, you're not going to let me to continue to record and we're almost done with the temple. I think almost done, yes, but also it's going to take a while because this is like the, the hardest to... Eh. Um, and you need to rest your voice. Gun. But gun. I could gun, also... Gun, 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 gun. <laughs> I could also not, though. And say that I did. <laughs> if you don't rest your voice, you can't do recordings tomorrow. You're not wrong. But I don't like that you're right. Okay, let me finish this wall and then we'll end the episode. <coughs>is some heavy dirt dude that's what i'm saying like it's not a it's a small space but it's like it's thick dirt as i have a small quote nozzle it's gonna take a while like my yellow nozzle is barely doing anything yep and my gun is stronger than yours Hold on. Okay, where is yeah. it? Where is it? It's tiny. I think it does. Like, you see this wall, right? There's, like, no dirt yet, somehow. I mean, I've seen a couple glowy spots. This all counts. Oh dear god. There we go, okay. Look at that. Look at that. That just leaves- Nearly there. That just leaves the ceiling in here. This pillar. And a few walls. Yeah. That's not a lot. No. I really want to keep playing. If we keep playing, you have to rest your voice. Hey, that's fine. I haven't been talking this whole time. But, um... <clears throat> Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a possum day and TTFN. Bye-bye.